Episode 19. Really? Episode 19. My boy, Trent Sanders, 36 Creative, co-CEO. I have to apologize to the audience today. You could blame this all on Luca. His football team is on the road to hopefully a championship. They have a Super Bowl. And my voice today is the product of uh, the semifinal game. So you'll actually get to hear Trent more and I won't be as annoying. T-Bone, how you doing, yeah. brother? How you doing? How you doing? Doing today? well, man. Good. Doing well. It is so awesome to have you. Um, Trent has become a very big part of my life um, over, call it the last year. Uh, the beauty of COVID has brought people together from all over the world and all over the country. And through serendipity, um, through a gentleman, uh, Joel, who kind of brought us together serendipitously, um, we become fast friends, got to meet Trent up in, up in the Granite State back in, uh, I think, July or August. And um, this guy, um, when I say salt of the earth and me and salt of the earth in the best possible way, uh, this guy that is on with me today, um, all the respect, love and honor for not only what this guy does in business, but what he's doing with, we'll get to, to Mutt Society, which is a nonprofit that Trent is, uh, that is bringing to you. I'm going to let him explain it because um, yeah, I won't do it justice, but just super rad to have you, man. Um, how's life up in up in New England, bro? In uh, in mid November, getting ready for Thanksgiving, getting ready to for the holidays. Um, how's life? Life's good. First fire the other night. It's nice. uh, not too chilly. Nice. Leaves are down. I uh, I started bagging my leaves this year for the first time, and I've called it vacuuming my yard, and I've become obsessed with it. Is it Zen? I, I have those things like vacuuming for me, the house. I have those yeah. moments. Yeah, my OCD cranks up to high gear. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So Trent, the reason why <clears throat> the reason why I have Trent on homage today is not only with the respect, because when we finally got to meet, it was it was a really cool meeting with my family when we were going up to bring the kids to go see a camp up in New Hampshire. Um, but the way Trent and his co-CEO have done business, um, it's a beautiful thing. I've, I've learned a ton from Trent um, with regards to how to, how to, it's validating how we've run DSM because I'm seeing what you're doing, what you and Steve are doing and how you're doing it and how you guys coexist and how you, you, you kind of run in parallel paths with regards to how you've grown the business. And I think there, that it's, you're doing it the right way and, you, and you're seeing the fruits of that labor. So tell us about 36, how you guys got started, <laughs> what you're doing now, how you've been growing, how the pandemic has affected you. Um, but it, it the reason I love the story is it's really similar to kind of how I started DSM. And I think Trent and Steve have a lot of the same kind of like core values to the way it is and the way it's grown. Like it's in a different market than we are, but it's had similar success. So tell us about 36 and, and how it kind of got started and, and how you guys coexist so beautifully and have grown the company. That's a big story with my rambling brain. I think we'll try to keep it consolidated. Uh, to start off, bro, I think it's been an interesting group of agency owners that have come together during the pandemic because of Joel. Yeah. And um, I think it's an interesting group because we all are looking up to each other, feeling like, yeah, there's definitely some validation, but um, we've had conversations where we're all learning from each other and then also being the teacher. So. It's been a rad, a rad, uh, a rad little journey through COVID with you guys, and um, and I like the the validator part point 
because I've gotten a lot of that from, from you and your story. Uh, so 36, real quick, let's see how I can do this. Uh, we are a foundational brand strategy and creative shop. Um, we do help with some growth, um, but we really just started off 17 years ago trying to, you know, our childish minds were trying to make the world a more beautiful place. <laughs> we started started with business cards. Um, first year we made a whopping $3,500 and we had, I think, 400% growth the next year to uh, whatever that would be, 15 grand. Uh, but yeah, we've just grown thinking about life work balance, trying to hire the best possible talent. And we've done that. Uh, we have an incredible team. I think we're right around you, maybe, maybe 20. Uh, that beeping means that I've been up for, or I've been drinking coffee for two hours. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the, the journey has been interesting. We've, we've accidentally almost hired leaders in each department. So brand strategy, uh, creative, and then uh, interactive that have been the unicorns that know how to take initiative and, and grow their own teams. And um, I think we've seen a lot of growth from that. We've always been extremely open to uh, our comrades or our competition. And, you know, like this whole thing started, it's just kind of learning from the best and trying to do the best work possible. And, and uh, we've succeeded in doing that. COVID, you know, we shed a couple of tears, a little bit afraid we were going to lose the, lose the battle, but uh, went at it with, I think it's, what's that courage? where you go at something with fear, but you keep going anyway. Um, and, you know, with a ton of help from people like you, we uh, kept that positive attitude and bobbed and weaved, went to startup mode for a couple of months and kicked ass in 2020 and 2021, uh, 2021 is going to be, yeah, our best year. And uh, looking forward to, uh, I was going to say more growth, but I think you and I have talked about it a, a bunch where it's, it's just, um, it's probably more strength. I don't think we want to grow to any capacity where we're losing sight of the life work balance and the quality of life for the team, but uh, stronger agencies definitely in the future, I hope. Yeah, one of the things we were actually <clears throat> later this morning, you know, we're having our huddle with, with the powers that be and talking about, you know, we hit our all of last year number two Fridays ago. So while it's great and there's always that like dangling carrot of, Hey, you know, what's next and pushing yourself and what you just said is what we are trying to kind of wrap our hands around, which is figuring out how to continue to excel while not losing sight of why we started this. Like, Almost the reason why the reason why we've become so good at what we do over the last two to three years is because we really have figured out what we don't want to be. And that's allowed us to really excel at what we so it's kind of like this weird paradox, but battling that and hitting a goal like that to, to me being the, you know, sort of the uh the head sales guy, if you will, it's kind of like all right, what's next? And that was how we were at the beginning. You know, I was always like, what's next? What's next? That's, that's how you take something from, you know, with 36, what you guys were at 3,500 and keep growing and growing and growing. And then all of a sudden in the journey, you have to find that balance between what you don't want to be and what you do want to be in order to find that sweet spot of what's made you like really good at what you did mm -hmm. and made the people that are doing it around you as happy as they want to be because they've bought into that vision that, you know, for some of our people, they could be making three, four X what they make at DSM and working in Manhattan. And that was their choice not to do it. They made mm -hmm. conscious life decisions not to do that. So it's, uh, <laughs> I, I told Zinka and Charlene that I was having this call with you and it was, it was actually perfect timing to have this call because what you're doing and how you're doing it again um 
I have to agree with you, bringing everybody together when, when it happened. And then even further bringing the group of guys that we have together that, you know, commiserate and enjoy each other's company and not only talk business, but talk life. I, I think that I, I honestly, um, I thought about this the other day because I, 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 I got to set up a call with Vic. I was like, I don't know where I'd be without this group of guys, without being able to meet you, without being able, like, I still haven't met Vic, like, which is nuts. Um, but to be able to have Casey and to be able to have Joe and see what Joe is doing with his new job and having Craft Gear, you know, come on and sponsor this, like, all these things that are happening are because of a willingness from, from someone like yourself to be like, okay, I've been through this journey. I don't know everything. And I, I want to be a part of something that's bigger than me and not only take, but be able to give back too. And I think that's a huge component. It's definitely a part of why I admire you so much because you have, you share that value of, Hey man, we're building this thing, but one, you have the, the foresight and you've had the foresight with Mud Society to be able to give back. So nothing is, nothing, this was never about you. That, that's what I love about you. you. You're really good at what you do, but you also have this um, amazing humbleness that you're just like, you're just Trent. You're just Trent, which is, which is um, you don't find and it's taken me time to learn. You don't find many people who are willing to do that or, or are going down that path with you where it's like every time you want to put yourself up on a pedestal, it's like, I, I look at you and I, I look at Casey and I look at yeah, Trent. Yeah. Like, no, 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 I'm serious. <laughs> I, 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 you guys help keep me grounded in yeah. what you do and how you do it. And there's never been a time, and this is honest to God's truth, there's never been a time where I've come to you guys, and again, I, I'm still learning how to do this, where I, I, don't, um, I, I don't do this real well. I always absorb things from people. I don't, I, I'm not one to come to people, and there's never been one time in any discussion with any of you guys where I've said, hey guys, I need an ear, and you guys have said no. And that's yeah. something that is something so commendable and so few and far between in this day and age. And I, and I think that that's why when we all get a chance to get together, I think it's going to be like one of the coolest meetings or dinners or whatever of all time. Yeah. Because, you know, like there's never been a time where, Hey man, I, I want to bounce something off you yeah, call me like, you know, or, you know, when you were away in Europe, like I'm away in Europe doing my thing. I'll get you when I get back, you know, yeah. driving to, you know, an hour and a half away to meet us, me and my family for lunch. Like people, a lot of people don't do that. And I think because we do that, we lose sight of the fact that we have something that's special like that. And um, so the, the homage uh, with this, that's, that's like literally one of the main reasons why I wanted to have you on. One of the main reasons why I, I just think the world of you and what you're doing. Um, I think what you're doing, how you're doing it, the way that you go about your business, I think is um, second to none. I, I don't have another word. Um, with regards to... <clears throat> I just talked a lot. Sorry about that. I'm losing my uh, That's how I yeah, know. Wait, wait, give me a second then. Uh, I just want to go all the way back to where you guys are as, at an agent, as an agency. I think it's a, a really, you know, one of the valuable pieces of this other than just the, you know, core friendship and a lot of that just being there for people uh, piece. But on a business side, I think we're probably two years, maybe less. It depends on how things move behind on that uh not to say it's a, a better or worse or a pedestal or not but um it's exciting to see or hear someone speak really confidently about where they are as an agency in terms of uh not just like 
according to our plan, this is where we are, but actually stake in the ground, like this is who we are. And, uh, and I think we can say that on a brand perspective, as far as our own brand, but I think we're still, COVID definitely made us explore some things and, and, um, and we need to get to that point where it's not just like our plan is to be this, but it's stake in the ground. We are, you know, confidently speaking of ourselves as this is our specialty. This is what we're good at. And we have partners like yourself that can kind of plug in and, and make us more full service, but, uh, you know, really focused. So it's cool. It's just cool. It's a cool piece of this group. I also agree with you on, in terms of, um, the fact that you can kind of lose sight of how special the group is because we're all kind of of similar mindset. Uh, and we do have to back up, um, once in a while and look at that. I mean, that, that meeting, I agree. And I wish people that were listening to this could almost be part of that group because they don't, it's really hard to understand how oddly <laughs> serendipitous and special that, that whole thing was. And so we have to, you know, we've laughed about, um, how it came to be, but, uh, every piece of that puzzle is, was really special. I mean, even Joel reaching out, he, he's a good or, you know, sincere dude just doing his thing and just randomly got the black hats together. And it's just, just really, really cool, really special. And yeah, the, the, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll drive to Toronto to meet you guys. I don't like, it's not like if you're in town, I'll have a beer with you. It's, it's like, I'm pumped about it. Dude, not for nothing. I actually already have a plan. So we, <laughs> we, we, um, like I said, this will be episode number 19. And I'm hoping by the time episode 50 rolls around that we're going to record, we're all going to be in one place and have that dinner or that group meeting or whatever it is, everybody in one room. So yep. we can actually record that and bring it to the world, wherever that is, whether it's down in Florida or up in Toronto or in New Hampshire or in New Jersey or whatever it is. Um, yep. sure I, I want to do that on episode 50. That's the cool. goal. If, if we can actually get to episode 50, I didn't, I didn't think in all honesty, it would get to episode 19. So yeah. here we are. Um, but um, so switching gears a little bit, because I really want to touch on this because I just think um, what you're doing with Mutt Society is super cool. Tell everybody a little bit about Mutt Society. I think the fact that, I mean, just what you're doing, you know, bringing bicycles to kids around the world that don't have it is, is that is in and of itself awesome. But how you're helping people, how it came about, like why you're doing it. Tell us about that. Like what inside Trent got that to be what it is today with, with Mud Society? I think, uh, if I could have anything in, in the world, it would be more people that would understand how good it feels to give back. And I think that's kind of the way that like people will come to me and, and, you know, at an event or meet myself and Andrew, who's the co-founder and say, you know, you guys are so awesome. Thank you so much for what you do. And, uh, and it's like a funny compliment to get because it's like getting complimented for enjoying your cake at your, on your birthday. You know, it's like, you're really enjoying that. Well, it's like, yeah, I know. I love doing this. Uh, but what we, what we basically do, and you've said it a little bit, but try to use bicycles as a, a way to empower and elevate communities. And it started off internationally. Um, it was kind of, ignited by the challenge that Puerto Rico had with Hurricane Maria. We had just gone down, enjoyed some really epic riding, uh, Andrew and I had, and, um, you know, kind of realized this little seed was planted. We realized that we were enjoying communities that didn't have much uh, without giving much back to them. So kind of, you know, something started, you know, jumping around in our minds then and then maria hit the island and we just met a bunch of really amazing people wanted to do something to help got a group of guys together to go back down uh do some trail building help you know that they, basically their trail system was devastated by the storm 
uh, and then, you know, a bunch of our friends down there didn't have running water. Uh, so we, you know, sent some, some solar showers down. We sent some light systems down. We sent some uh, tents down and then brought a bunch of stuff. Uh, we've got connected with the boys and girls club down there and uh, brought some crank lights and things for the kids. And in that little journey, which was really amazing, um, there were two things that were said to me. One was, well, if you're going to invest in the future, invest in the youth, which I, you know, can't get out of my head. And then the other was this dude, Eduardo, who's now a really good friend of ours, who's building another trail system down there. Uh, we're actually going down in two weeks to, uh, to see what he's doing. But he said, you know, it's pretty basic, but a lot of people say they're going to do something, but you guys are the only ones that actually came down and did it. And um, it sounds, again, it sounds like one of those funny compliments because in my brain, that's now my challenge. Like when I say I'm going to do something, I remember he said that and it's like, oh man, I can't, I can't let me down or I can't let whoever down, uh, you know, talking doesn't, doesn't bring around about change. So it kind of like challenges me to do it, even if I might not have been naturally inclined to continue whatever it is I've started. Accountability, man. Yeah. I, account yeah. Accountability. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, before COVID we, we kind of turned it into this, um, instead of going on a vacation every year, we would get together, find some initiative. Um, we did some, some work in Romania that was pretty badass. We did some work, uh, small amount in Cuba, small amount in Iceland, uh, and then some more work down in, in Puerto Rico. And it was kind of just this really cool annual initiative that we did to use bikes to give back to these communities. And then, when COVID happened, obviously we were pretty, rather limited as to where we could uh, go and what we could do. So, you know, at first it was a real kind of a, a letdown. We were bummed out about having to cancel. We were going to do um, Paraguay. I think that's how you say it. And a uh, crazy story as to why, but um, that was all canceled. And then we uh, just started like searching around. We obviously we were all kind of hunkered down with a, a bit of time on our hands and uh yeah i just did a bike drive and it worked out really well so we started doing um you know basically really focusing on the youth so getting kids physically on bikes doing some mentorship doing a little bit of trail work locally and uh this year the brand kind of just blew up from bringing it local and showing people that we were you know as invested in our own communities as we are uh in communities that are maybe a little more international so what yeah. uh what with, with regards to i've gotten to see a little bit firsthand with regards to like valentina and things like that but like what when you i guess for my audience it's really important because one of the things or i guess one of the passions that we share together is that is is being there for the community and you know you you're doing it through mud society with bicycles and you know we might be doing it through uh, you know backpacks for for veterans or or you know uh, working with eva's village which is a soup kitchen and a homeless shelter but having that uh, just for the audience because I, I, like i know your heart really well like i've gotten to know you pretty well through multiple conversations but that passion and drive. And I guess one of the things for the younger listeners, whoever's going to be listening to this, the values that Trent and I share with regards to giving back and how important that was and how you can make an impact in your community by doing very little things. I mean, when you went to Puerto Rico, you're probably like, Oh, we're bringing crank lights. Like, you know, what's, what's that ultimately going to do? And you don't realize that something so small can make such an impact on someone that doesn't have much and what that meant to the community. Um, and again, I think you're seeing living proof of it up in New Hampshire in your local community. Now that when you say like your brand blew up, well, brands don't blow up by the, the people that are working in it, sitting on their butts and not doing anything. You, you actually have to be out there and you have to, um, when you say it's like enjoying your birthday cake, like you, you, find something, whatever that may be that has, that creates that spark in you, you know, and, and pour yourself into it because 
what you realize, one of the things that you said that I find when I talk to younger people or talk to some of the folks that are in my sort of sphere, they're like, well, we want to do something, but we don't know, like, get off your ass and do anything. Mm -hmm. Find what you love and do it and pour yourself into it. Because when you do that, that's how your brand blows up. You know, and, and, and I'm sure you didn't get into it to have your brand blow up, but like when you see the difference you're making and the impact you're making to those around you, that one, probably those folks aren't expecting it because people, mo- most people aren't caring enough to like actually give back. And two, um, that impact you're making of meeting people where they're at and when they let their guard down, realizing that you're there just to be there because you love doing it, that's where like the rubber meets the road and that's where the magic happens. And I I think that um, sharing that story, whether you're doing it in Iceland or Romania or Cuba or in Southern New Hampshire um, or in suburban New Jersey or wherever it may be, um, that value and that, that, um, that feeling that you get is just, it's so, uh, it's so amazing. So when you, you know, when we, when we wrap this up, you know, I'm going to give you a chance to tell people about where they can find about out about mud society and everything that you guys are doing. Um, wh- where do you, where do you see this going now? Like, are you going to like really invest in the New Hampshire community? Are you trying to go to more places around the world? Like what's, what's the, what's the objective? Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot, bro. No, dude. Um, The best part about a charitable organization, in my opinion, or running one is that if you do have all good intentions, which we do innately, um, then the plan can be whatever good you can find so you know we do have a board and we do answer to the board in some ways we're very small but um but they're all of like mind and and really understand that our initial goal was not to like hunker down and destroy the soul of this thing and just to make it a you know a working business model but it's really to to just have goodwill and and spread a little bit of charitable attitude through the world so where are we going? I mean, it's just, it's kind of carrying us. We had a young man, this kid, Grady, um, was on the chairlift with me at one point last year, I suppose. And uh, he's like, well, first of all, he's with another dude and, and he's like, hey, Trent, I want you to meet my friend. And then he turned to this kid and he's like, what was your name again? <laughs> and the guy was like, Greg or whatever. And he's like, yeah, this is Trent. This is my friend, Greg. And I'm like, that's the best attitude <laughs> everybody. Like, all, you have all the friends. That's, you know, anybody you want to be your friend, give me your friend at that point. Yo, yo, me and my buddy. Yo, dude, what's your name again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Greg, Greg. This is my buddy, Greg. This is my, yeah. this is my bro. I've known him for like 12 seconds. Yeah. Me, so me he, Trent. Yeah, I just, yeah, we just became friends. But he, he was like, yeah, I just wanted him to meet you know, the owner of the Mud Society. And then he turned to Greg and he's like, so the Mud Society basically like me and my friends, there was an autistic kid that was one of our neighbors and he'd never had a bike. And, and so we saved up and, and we've got him a bike and now we ride with him every Thursday or something like that. And then he turned to me, this kid's like, I actually don't know how, I don't remember how old he is. He seems like a young, like young man, but he's probably 10. And uh, he turns to me and he's like, is that what the Mutt Society is? And I was like, yeah, man, that's exactly what the Mutt Society is. That's ludicrous. Almost like, you know, gave me chills at the time. And then uh, he, long st- story that I won't even get into, but he basically started uh, our athlete program. So we have a, an athlete pro- program that supports on different levels, probably around 35, 40 kids. And uh, it's not uh, all levels of support. And it's also not comprised of all of children that are in need you know it's it's kids that want to spread the the message and understand what we're all about and and want to you know uh 
yeah, give back or give back ideas or whatever it is. So uh, anyway, that, that kid Grady started this athlete program. And aside from doing our initiatives that are local and with bike drives, aside from, you know, trying to start to plan another international trip, we've been uh, kind of immersing ourselves in that. And then you mentioned Valentina. Uh, she's, what do they call it? The, the uh, downhill queen of Colombia. She's just this absolutely badass. Um, I think she might be 18. Uh, that has been, you know, against all odds, money being part of that, uh, has, you know, climbed the ranks of downhill riding in Colombia. Last year, there was some challenges with travel, so we didn't get to do as much. But this year, um, I'll be careful here, actually, because none of that's technically in stone. But this year, hopefully, ourselves and uh, a larger bike brand um, – uh, are going to try to get her into the World Cup series and and uh, basically the UCI World Cup. So um, all around the world, we're looking at some travel expenditures and like how we're going to do the budget for it. But uh, that's just a kind of an exciting, completely random thing that that we're throwing out there. So wow. to circle way back around, you know, we kind of letting the winds guide us and and. Um, just having an absolute blast doing, doing good. To, I just want to jump back to when you're talking to the kids, if there's any younger people listening or any older people too, just like, doesn't even have to be in your passion. Just do shit that blows people's minds. And my example of that would be, it took me like four or five years to get the balls to do this, but, uh, and it's going to sound funny, um, but my next door neighbor works his ass off and, uh, is never able to be home you know when he's home he's working on his truck or you know it's just whatever so very rarely does he have time to do like the leaves and the lawn and all that and him and his wife were out out there the other day uh just working in the yard which is you know the most normal seemingly american thing to do but uh i just went over and was like dude there's no question about it there's not like there's not a discussion here uh i'm on your team like let's do this and so we raked leaves and blue leaves and mowed the lawn <laughs> and they were like what you know who, who just goes over and mows someone else's lawn and t you know your OCD was, kicked in <laughs> yeah my OCD I'm like I gotta look at the leaves I might as well help them clean them up but uh I think the most fun part of that is not anything but the just tr just to see someone's reaction when you do something really random and you know, unexpected for him. Yep. So it can be, mo you know, it's not just bikes. It's just anything. Help the guy at the grocery store clean up the carts. Like it'll blow his freaking mind. I, I, um, <clears throat> I couldn't agree more with you in that. And this is something that, I mean, you've met all three of my kids. They're all vastly different, all, you know, all different ages. And I, and I just explained to them, like meeting people where they're at, and having no um no agenda yeah yeah that's great people don't understand when you do a little thing that helps them because the world is conditioning us to believe or it wants us to um i thought at the beginning of covid the, that the world there are moments in time post 9-11 when COVID hit that the message was like, we need to help. We need to be there for one another. We need to work together. We need to give a little bit of ourselves in order to get somebody else to where they need to go or want to go or have to go. And it's not that it's not losing faith in humanity, but it's like, there are those inflection point moments that happen and you're like, all right, for the people that get it now, the, the, the wave is going to start. Like people are actually going to start putting this into life every day. And it, it doesn't have to be something monumental. You know, it's, um, <laughs> you talked about before go, going to the supermarket and actually like walking down the aisles and like taking it all in and slowing down. And, you know, people try, tend to do that 
around the holidays or maybe it's vice versa. Maybe they start going crazy. Like, oh my God, I'm having eight people over this night, you know, or 18 people. But there was, um, I think it was Saturday. I was with Luca and I went to Starbucks or something. And then I stopped over at, for my, for, I like ice cream. I, I went to mm. stop and shop and bought lots of ice cream. I bought like six half gallons of ice cream. But in the process of that, nonsensical story um there was an older woman who actually uh was emptying out of her cart into her car and she didn't have a husband or anything like that she was probably I, I don't know how old she was she was probably in her late 60s early 70s that's what she looked like and i said to luke i said let's go over you know she wasn't struggling but it was just like let's go over she had like 10 bags in the car like let's just go over and help her like get them into the trunk and before she was so guarded that you would have thought that me and a 10 year old when we walked over and said can we help you like you know just unload it it's like three cars down she was she, like i thought she was going to take a swing with one of the bags and like knock me out like and you know like and it took her a minute to kind of like bring down her guard and say oh she's like i wasn't expecting you i was like we're just here if you need help we're more than happy to help you and she's like, that would be amazing. I would really appreciate that. And then she would talk oh, Luca behind me and whatever. And not to like, it's it not meant as like, oh, this is what we do versus what you do. But like those little moments and the reaction of somebody that had no reason. We're in suburban New Jersey and I'm standing there with a 10 year old. I was going to walk away with like the fluff that she was going to have for like her, her cookies that she was making for Thanksgiving. like. No, she didn't have any would have been the one thing to take if you were going to take anything though right like the, the, or if she had like other half gallons of ice cream i would have probably <laughs> run off with that yeah you know it was like seemingly you know it was like some oil some cans of seltzer like i'm, I'm not going to run off with your cans of seltzer and neither is my 10 year old like we're not working in tandem here yeah but, but i you know I, I said to luca on the way in, into the car i was like see and he's now getting to that point where he's perceptive enough where he he was kind of like thrown off by it because he still there's a, a small part of him that still lives in a bubble of being a 10 year old and being a fifth grader. That's like, why would anybody think that way? And then the other side of it where it was like when she finally let her guard down and was like, oh, you know, sh I would love that. And she saw that we were like being genuine. She's like, I would love the help. Thank you guys so much. I was like, Luca, here's a great lesson in parallels right here of what happened. And again, you're probably not going to fully understand it, but meeting people where they're at, it's going to take them a moment. And sometimes people won't see things the same way you see them. But I think it's a great lesson. Like I joke with Samantha right now because he's at that point where He's playing football. He's playing basketball. Like, bro, you got to be like, I'm pushing the tough side of him. And he's still mama's boy. You know, he's still at that age where the hormones haven't kicked in yet. And he still, you know, loves laying on the couch with, with Samantha and like, you know, cuddling together. And I'm like, dude, you got to stop that. Let's go. Yeah. You got to stop it. And she's like, just he, in two years, he's not going to do that anymore. He's not like the hormones are going to kick in and he's going to be all tough and all, you know, piss and vinegar and the whole thing. Yep. So just let him be right now. And it's, it's a struggle with those lessons and trying to like get people to, to really hone in on like, all right, meet people where they're at and a little thing can go such a long way. And I actually want to say this here on the air or whatever, as we do this, because if there's ever a time to do it, like now, now is the time to do it, you know, giving back in a time we're all blessed with so much, you know, in the grand scheme of the world. I mean, you saw it when you were down in Puerto Rico, people are living with nothing, nothing. You know, we live in the top 1% and giving a little bit back here and there um, is just something that I love, I love what you are doing. I love what you guys do at Mud Society. I love how it's done. I love that it, it comes from, I can't say this enough with you, Trent. The, what you see right here is what you're getting. Like there, there's no edifice. Like T-bone is T-bone, that's it. 
<laughs> T-bone. That's, T-bone's T-bone. That's what we love. That's who we know. That's how he is. This is how you're getting what Trent is all the time. And I think whether it's 36 or whether it's Mutt Society, it is, it is such an honor to know you and to continue to be a part of the journey with you because – I think we we still got, so, I mean, I know you're a few years behind me, but like we still got so much to accomplish and there's so many conversations left to be had. And I just, it, it, I get so excited about that. And I, I don't know, like the homage that I have for you today, like I said, this is your episode, man. Um, all the love and respect to you, what you guys are doing, how you're doing it. Um, and continue to do it, continue to do good things in a way that is just you. I don't know how else to say it. You are a good human being. You are doing things the right way. You are embracing, you always embrace the grind. You, you are, um, you are an amazing example of what more human beings should be. And Uh This no no no. This give yourself credit. This homage is for you, man. So I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna finish up here because we're rolling up on like ten minutes to go. the The last word is yours, my friend. Have at it. And honestly, Trent, so blessed and lucky to know you. And I'm so happy that we got the chance to meet. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So the floor is yours. Hell yeah! Right back at you, man. I think. Uh... I think I'll, I'll do a, um, I think I'll, I'll, I I don't know anything about sports, so I don't know how to say it, but I'm going to make an assist. I think that's how you say that. And uh, I'll, I'm going to pass the homage to that mentality that you and I were talking about when we started, you know, chatting about doing this episode. Um, And that is, uh, you know, struggling i think all of every human struggles with like what the point is of this whole entire life um at one point or another whether it drifts into the background sometimes is uh is normal i suppose but what i've hung my hat on is there's got to be a way for each and every one of us to leave a little bit of a legacy. It doesn't have to be this massive, crazy change on the world, but just something after we move along in this whole journey in space, uh, you know, making sure that we make some sort of really positive um, effect on the, on the future. And it can be, like you said, it's, you know, it's not just a crank light for a kid, but it's a kid realizing that someone that he doesn't know actually gives a shit that's the that's the thing it's like it's not the bike it's a kid knowing that there's someone out there that actually noticed them and and cares or it's the freedom that they got or the health benefit that they got or the they met someone because of a bike or whatever it is so uh you know being able to figure out some way we can leave an effect positive effect and then i think the second thing um maybe equally as important is also, like what you said, you know, finding something that you're passionate about that allows you to give back so you can kind of revitalize your energy. So enjoying yourself, like it's not an easy thing to just say. It's an easy thing for a lot of people to say, but it's not an easy thing for people to realize sometimes just with the struggles they're dealing with. But like try so hard to enjoy life so that you can rejuvenate your, that energy to give back. There's no way to just keep giving and giving and giving and not uh re-energize like you have to go on the walk in the woods by yourself with you know and leave your phone in your car you gotta go to the beach if that's your thing you gotta you know stop and yeah walk slower in the in the mall when you're christmas shopping even though everybody around you's uh freaking out like be good to yourself and um and i think that you know those two pieces i think are what i'd like to to pass it forward to is like if we can get that if we can get more people to want to want to leave a lasting positive impression on the world uh um even after our short time and uh 
and realizing that it's not just it's not possible to just keep giving without enjoying your life too a little bit i think we'd be in a good good spot that's my last my last word that's your my last, last word my last words i um i can't thank you enough for coming on today i know you're super busy um keep doing what you're doing man all the all the love and and respect goes out to you appreciate your time keep keep building 36 keep building mutt whatever i can do to be there for you guys to stand along in the journey you know i'm there and um and really appreciate it and we're going to close this homage by saying man this one goes out to you this is this is your homage um you're an incredible person and uh I am I'm very blessed to have you to call you a brother and a friend, man. So oh, yeah, brother. Thank you very much. And uh be well, my friend. Hopefully we'll get up to New Hampshire again soon, or you can come down here and uh plan for that 50th episode. We're gonna do it, uh do it with everybody. We're gonna get everybody together in one room, bring it to the world. It's gonna be a disaster. <laughs> I love that. All right, I'm in. All yeah, right, start, dude. Yeah, keep going with the episode so that comes sooner than later. All right, dude. I will. I will. We love you, pal. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Cheers, buddy. All right, Trent. See ya.